Wouldn't you know it, it's about that time of year again to talk about gifting and taxes too, I guess. But in all seriousness, it's officially the holiday season, and that means much of our focus turns to giving gifts to others, and why technically that iPad you're planning on gifting your grandchild could theoretically be subject to a gift tax. Check out our other video on what constitutes as a gift for gift taxes to learn why. Let's jump into some numbers because the IRS has released the 2024 numbers for a lot of great stuff regarding annual and lifetime gift tax exclusions, estate tax exemptions, and retirement plan contributions for IRAs, 401ks, 403b, 457 plans, and thrift savings plans. Today we're going to talk about that first section, gift and estate tax exemptions, and our next video will be on the retirement plan numbers, so make sure you're subscribed for that. But without further ado, grab your hot chocolate, please be generous and drop a like on this video, and let's talk some numbers. Let's start with what likely brought you to this video in the first place, gift taxes. Gift taxes are, of course, a tax levied by the government on the giver of a gift when the value of that gift exceeds a certain threshold, which for next year is going up. And yes, you heard that right. It's the person giving the gift who pays the tax, not the recipient. So what is this limit? Well, for 2023, it was 17,000 per person. For 24, it will go up to 18,000 per person. That means I will be able to give up to $18,000 to my brother next year and the government won't care. Not that I have $18,000 to give, but you know, it's nice to have the option and not have to pay a 40% tax on that gift. Which, yes, you heard that right, up to a 40% tax could be imposed if I were to exceed that annual limit of $18,000. However, the key word there is annual. That $18,000 limit is per year, meaning you could give someone $18,000 in year one and $18,000 in year two and not pay a gift tax. But what if you wanted to give more than that in one year? Well, now we need to look at the lifetime gift tax exclusion, which is a number I can give up to during my lifetime and never pay a gift tax so long as I don't exceed that limit. It's essentially a meter that you build up throughout your entire life, and so long as you don't hit the target, no gift tax will ever be owed. Even if you were to gift more than the annual exclusion limit in one year, let's say 20 grand in 2024. So what is that target number you may be asking? Well, in 2023, it was $12.9 million. In 2024, it's going up to a staggering $13,610,000. That means you can give away a whole heck of a lot of money during your life, apply it towards your lifetime exclusion by telling the IRS, yet never pay a gift tax. Another point to keep in mind before closing the book on gift taxes is that the lifetime gift tax exclusion limit applies to all gifts given to anyone during your lifetime, whereas the annual gift tax exclusion limit applies to gifts given to one person. That means I can give $18,000 to person A and $18,000 to person B in 2024 and still not pay a gift tax since neither gift was over the annual exclusion. Lastly, both these gift tax limits have another perk that they share with the estate tax. So let's talk estate taxes next before going into what they all share. Jumping to a topic everyone loves to think about over the holidays, death taxes. When you hear the phrase death taxes, what people are actually referring to is the estate tax. It's a tax paid by an estate, either through a trust or probate, where that estate's value reaches above a certain threshold, just like the gift tax. And just like the gift tax, the tax levied is going to be in the ballpark of 40,000 of that overage, or the amount above the threshold. And just like the lifetime gift tax exclusion limit, the estate tax exclusion limit is also set to rise in 2024 because these are actually the same number. The estate tax exclusion limit is the same as the lifetime gift tax exclusion limit, which as a reminder for 2024 is rising up to $13.61 million. That means an estate must have more than $13.61 million of value before an estate tax is levied. Also, keep in mind that this is just federal. Each state can levy their own estate tax, and there are a handful that do, but notably, California is not one of them. So if you live in one of the following states, then you should check to see if your estate may be subject to estate taxes because every state I'm about to mention, with the exception of Connecticut, has a lower state estate tax exemption level than the feds. All right, let's see if I can do this. Connecticut, Hawaii, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, double dipping with an inheritance tax, Massachusetts, Minnesota, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, Washington, Washington, D.C. So if you live in one of those states, then estate taxes should be a topic of discussion with your estate planning attorney. Lastly, I teased a connection between gift and estate taxes earlier, and it's this. You can double all these numbers with this one simple trick. 
get married. The annual gift tax exclusion limit is not only per recipient, it's per giver. For example, in 2024, my wife and I can each give 18,000 to person A for a total of 36,000 because we each gave up to the exclusion limit and were separate people. Person A is making out like a bandit. Now, if only we had that kind of money to be throwing around. Next, the lifetime gift tax exclusion and estate tax exclusion limits apply to each one of us, meaning that that $13.61 million can effectively double to $27.22 million in total. This brings us to the concept of portability in estate taxes, where, in essence, when a spouse dies and we're in danger of an estate tax kicking in, then the surviving spouse can elect to bring along with them the unused exemption limit of the deceased spouse, thus effectively increasing the estate tax exemption limit that surviving spouse will eventually have when they eventually pass away. I've talked about portability and estate taxes before, so check out that video if you want more details on the concept and how to take advantage of it. One last point I'll leave you with today, and it's something I'm sure you had a grand time discussing around the Thanksgiving table. That's right. It's politics. Tax rates are not something handed down from on high, but something set by some politician when they're hammering out their legislative pet projects. In this case, we're talking the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the Trump tax cuts. It's due to this act that the annual gift tax and estate tax exemption levels are where they're at. Obama era legislation increased these numbers and indexed them to inflation. The 2017 TCJA said, Leave the inflation part, but let's double the numbers and call it a day. But before walking out the door, someone wrote an expiration date of 2025 on there. This means that assuming Congress does nothing to address the TCJA, which they can barely keep the government open and, and maybe shut down in between when we film this and when you see it, means these numbers are going to drop down to what they would have been under the Obama era legislation. While we don't know what those numbers would end up being in 2026, since it's all tied to inflation, that might be getting under control remains to be seen. The current estimates are that these exclusion limits will drop to around 6 million or so. Significantly lower than what they are today, but still enormously high for most of us. I know, taxes may not be the most exciting thing in the world to talk about, especially when we couple that discussion with politics, but if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'm attorney Andrew Bethel, guiding you to make the best decisions for you and your loved ones. Drop a comment below if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other videos. Stay informed, and I'll see you next time.